Today is finally the day, boys. I'm wearing something cool. We got the hoodie and the hat going right now because we're gonna do something cool today. We are finally starting on the turbo Honda Civic build. This thing is gonna be so freaking sick and I am so excited. This car right now is a bone stock 2010 8th gen Honda Civic Si. It's got the K20Z3 in it, the six speed trans with the LSD, and this car has just over 200,000 kilometers on it because she has been the daily for the past like two years. I bought the car with 130,000 kilometers on it. I've put about 70,000 kilometers on it since in like two years. And you can tell it's a daily because it's still got the winter tires on it. Before we even start this build, I just wanna go over everything that is done to this car right now. Everything on this car is pretty much bone stock, except for we have the I doing head unit, which if you did not see that video, I will put a link up top to that. You might think it's dumb that I'm bringing up the head unit as a mod, but this head unit is actually gonna have a huge part in this Turbo Civic build because we are installing a Honda piggyback ECU into this car and all of the gauge monitors for the Honda are going to be displayed on the head unit, which is gonna be so freaking cool. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do it, but that's gonna be in a later video once we actually get the turbo kit installed. The only other mod to this car that will actually affect the performance of the car is we have a competition stage four six putt clutch in this car. I actually blew up the clutch disc in this thing. So that was more of a maintenance thing, but I figured while I had the transmission out. I put a six puck in it. That way, when we go to install this turbo kit, all we gotta do is slap the turbo kit in, injectors, fuel pump, get the Honda in there, and we are gonna see how much power we can make in this car on a budget. And I am freaking pumped. So this is episode three of the Turbo Honda Civic build series. Episode two, we fixed everything that we needed to fix on this car maintenance-wise to get it back to 100% mint mechanical shape. And in episode one, we basically just unboxed the turbo kit and showed you guys everything that was in it. Now, in today's video, episode three is gonna be basically just tearing down absolutely everything we need to on this car to get all of the turbo kit parts installed. So all the turbo parts for this car are actually in the trunk and they're in the back seat right now just to save space in the shop. As you can see, we got lots of parts in here. So when you're installing a turbo kit on a car, you are basically modifying the intake and exhaust systems of the car. So that is gonna be the first thing that we start tearing apart today. This stock intake in this car is so bulky and takes up so much space. I just wanna have a big old turb ski sitting right there. So the first thing that we are gonna take apart just to give us more space in this already crammed eighth gen engine bay is gonna be the intake. I'm gonna get the wiper cowl taken off just so that we have a little bit more arm space to work back there. And the reason we're taking the intake take out first is because that will give us a lot more arm space to get at the exhaust manifold from the back. So we can actually reach our arms in here and get to the back of the engine. So then we can get the exhaust manifold taken off. Then after that, we also got to get the front bumper taken off because we're doing a front mount intercooler setup. We got to route all the intercooler piping. But before I get rambling too much because you guys have already been listening to me talk for like three or four minutes now, let's start getting this thing ripped apart. <laughs> So we got most of the intake stuff torn out now. I didn't feel like showing that step by step because it's pretty self-explanatory. There's just one bolt on the bottom down there that holds the intake on. There's a stud up here with a nut on it, another bolt there. Unplug the MAF sensor, disconnect the two PCV lines, the couplers to the throttle body, and then take all the intake pipes out. I ended up taking out the battery tray and the ECU too, just to give myself some extra space. I did take one more intake pipe out right here that goes into the fender. And and the last one we need to take out, which is gonna be in the way for our front mount piping, is that bottom intake piece down there. And it comes out right into the engine bay from the fender. But I think I gotta pull the front bumper off to get that out because it's a pretty big box down there. So honestly, now that we got all of that out, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pull off that little plastic VTEC cover there so that I have access to the fuel rail for when we take the injectors out. And then I'm gonna start pulling these panels off. So we're gonna pull this panel off right here, just a couple body clips on the top so that we can have access and see if there's any body clips under there holding the front grill on for the front bumper. Then I wanna get the wiper cowl taken off. And then once we get that front piece off, we're gonna get the front of the car jacked up. And then I'm gonna start taking the front bumper off. And then once we get the front of the car jacked up and I get the front bumper 
bumper off. We can kind of see how we're gonna mock up the intercooler piping. And the car is a little bit higher up, so I'm not gonna be slouched over like crazy, trying to reach my arms in there to get to the exhaust manifold on the back of the engine. And I can get underneath the car to take the exhaust manifold off. So I can get at any of the bolts underneath the car. So to get your wipers off, you're just gonna pop these two little plastic covers up here with a little pick. We'll pop the wipers off, pop the wiper cowl off, and that should give us some more access. It's happening again. I'm just looking at everything in this engine bay and I just want to pull it all apart and sandblast it and powder coat it and make it look pretty, but it's a budget build. So I think what I'm gonna do, just because I've never boosted a Civic before, is we're gonna put this entire turbo kit in. I'm not gonna take anything off and powder coat it or Cerakote anything or do any of that. I might heat wrap the headers just because it is pretty tight back there, but I'm just gonna pressure wash everything and clean it. And then we're gonna install everything. We're gonna run the car on the dyno. We're gonna get her all dialed in and it's gonna be absolutely hideous, but it's gonna rip. And then if I like the car and I decide I wanna make this an actual clean build and start powder coating everything and rip everything apart again and make it nice, then we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But right now I am holding back so hard from this kind of stuff. Like this intake would look so sick if I did this whole car in like a blue and black theme and just had like black piping, but like a blue valve cover and a black intake manifold and then like a blue cold side housing on the turbo. I'm just imagining so much right now and it could be so sick. But everything is like alloy steel color right now, that's silver and so is the turbo, like the regular aluminum color. So we're just gonna run it like that. So I took off both these covers for one, I'm gonna put new spark plugs in this thing for when we boost it because I have no idea how many miles are on these spark plugs. And we have access to the fuel rail. In the fuel system on this car, we are not even building fuel lines. We're not doing anything. We are sticking to the stock returnless fuel systems. On these 8th gen Civics, all they have is one feed line coming into the fuel rail right here and it's a dead end rail. And that fuel line runs back right there and goes all the way back to the gas tank. And I'm pretty sure on these cars, the regulator is actually in the tank. If I I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me on that, but I think it is. So for now, we're not gonna take the fuel rail off or pull the spark plugs or anything like that. We're gonna leave all that together just so that this engine stays sealed up and I don't have to put any plugs in or cover anything with regs. We did get the wiper cowl off and we got this front panel off so we have access to these clips for the front bumper. And I broke pretty much every single clip on this freaking wiper cowl. So I'll have to get new clips for that for sure. But as you can see now, I can actually get my hands back here and if I get a light, you you can see the exhaust manifold down there, which is a good thing because all the bolts for it are up top. So I can get all the heat shield bolts off, I can get all the top bolts off, and then we can take the bottom bolts off from underneath the car. And take the header two bolt connection off that bolts the rest of the exhaust. Cause that's what our downpipe is gonna go to off the turbo. So at this point, this has been pretty simple. This is like no more than maybe 15, 20 minutes of tearing stuff down and we already got way more room to get at everything in the engine bay. One thing I am noticing is we're gonna have to do something with these valve cover breather lines since these went to the intake. And once the turbo's in there, it's not gonna be going to the intake. So I think all we're gonna have to do is just loop this valve cover breather line to the crankcase breather so that it just equalizes pressure between the two. And then we'll have to build a soft line that goes from this coolant port to the throttle body. Cause I'm gonna be getting rid of this hard line right here completely because we're not gonna need it and it's ugly. So on the Civic, this is my first time working on Civics. I'm a big super Subaru guy. And if you guys have not seen the Subaru build and you're here just for the Honda stuff, honestly, go check it out. That car is an absolute animal and it's going to be what this Civic is going up against. So if you guys want to take a look at the SCI videos, I'll put a link up top to the track day video where we broke a 12 second quarter mile. I think we ran like an 11.9 because that's a sick video. But on these Civics, it looks like it's pretty similar to the Subaru where you have your PCV right here. It has one vent that vents to the actual crankcase here. And then this one on the 
outside goes to your intake and so does the port from your valve cover breather. Now that valve cover breather, I think you could either just loop it straight to this fitting that goes to the PCV or you could just put a breather tube on there and block that one off. I'm not 100% sure. We'll figure it out when we get there. You just need some way to equalize pressure from the head to the crankcase. But that's gonna be later. So for now, let's do what I said before, get the front end of this thing jacked up, get this front bumper off. We could take a look at how we're gonna mock up this intercooler and stuff. And then the last thing that we're probably gonna get taken off in this video, I think is gonna be the exhaust manifold because I could see that being a huge pain to take off. see how the hell we're gonna mount this. This thing is so rusty. I gotta show you guys how rusty this is. So the front bumper is off and honestly, it was kind of a pain because the two little 10 mils that sit right here and hold your fender liner up, were seized right to the brackets. So I ended up just spinning them to get the plastic hot and melt it and then popped it off. So we're gonna find a new way to secure that. I'm probably gonna take this whole lower lip off anyways and then build my own lip or something like that. But look at the brackets for these headlights. These are disgusting. And this is the good side. This side looks like it's got 400,000 miles on it. That is absolute cancer, nasty. But the front bumper's off now. And I said before that I didn't wanna be leaned over to reach the exhaust manifold stuff but now I can't reach it with how high it is jacked up so I'm probably gonna lower those jack stands a bit and then we'll get to work to taking the exhaust manifold off because honestly now that the bumper's off I don't really want to try and fit up the intercooler or anything I just want to get everything stripped down that I know 100% is gonna be coming off this car and then we'll start fitting it up with all the new parts but I actually forgot one thing now that we have this bumper off I can probably get this whole intake piece off I think there's just one 10 mil left right there and then this whole thing comes out so I'm assuming this is where intercooler pipes probably gonna run through. And I think on Hondas, both of them come through one side and then loop through the intercooler, come back up the same side. It ain't like a Subaru. Ooh, that's rusty. Ooh, she came out though. I can't believe that didn't break. This thing is rusty as hell. Now this whole piece should come out, I think. Get out of there. What is holding you? I'm gonna break this. Oh, there we go. Man, that is a tight fit. Woo, nice. The stock intake is officially 110% out. Now that that is out, we have the entire intake system removed. There's not a single piece of the intake left other than the throttle body. It is all sitting on the floor over here, including all my wiper cowl pieces. So now the next step that we gotta do, like I said before, is take off the exhaust manifold, but I wanna show you guys something first and show you why this is gonna suck when your car has 200,000 kilometers on it. We'll see if you guys can even see down there. You might be able to see one bolt. If I zoom in, right down there. That bolt, you can't really see much because of the lighting, but you can see how rusty it is. So pray for me, boys. Hopefully these come off. I am one bolt away from getting this exhaust manifold out, but we got the heat shield out now, and I am so surprised none of those broke, but none of the heat shield bolts broke. And I don't even know where I put them, to be honest with you, but they're somewhere here. I did take the two bolts off from the header to the rest of the exhaust, the two bolt connection. One of them came out and the other one snapped, which is okay because we're not gonna be reusing them anyways. And then the one mount for the headers on the bottom, that bolt came out real nice, which is good, even though I don't think we're gonna be using that bracket for the Sidewinder mount either but we'll see I heard just from reading forums and stuff like that that these CX racing sidewinder manifolds tend to crack because of the weight on the turbo and not having a bracket on them so we might rig up something to make that bracket fit onto the CX racing manifold so you guys saw in the time lapse I was leaning over getting my arms back here from each side to get those manifold bolts and so far I have two of the bolts out which are right here and they came out super nice 
And then the two nuts that go on the studs came out really nice too. There's one bolt in the middle and then there's one bolt on each side. The ones on the side are kind of underneath the one tube for the headers. So this side was easy enough to get out because I can reach my arms down here. But that side, I think I'm gonna have to get it out from underneath the car. And another thing I thought I should mention for you guys, just to make it easier for getting that heat shield out, is if you disconnect this top line here, this is actually your purge valve line. So this line right here goes to this metal tube, which goes to your purge valve. And then that purge valve purge is all the fuel vapors that come up from this line from the gas tank. And it feeds it back into your intake manifold, which eventually I'm probably gonna delete that purge valve too, because I live in Alberta. We don't have emission laws here, so I don't need it in the car. But just to keep this simple, we're gonna leave it in for now. Unless that line interferes with the sidewinder manifold and I can't find a way to get it back to that nipple on the purge valve without melting the line. Another thing I did to get that heat shield out so that I could slide it out the side and bring it out this way was I disconnected the one fuel line from the rail, which is right here. All you gotta do is squeeze these two little blue or turquoise tabs and then the fuel line should slide right off. And there's another fitting right there that you could disconnect as well. And you have to take this little black cap off of it first, but you can literally just pop this off with your fingers. So to get that out, we disconnected that purge line. We disconnected the fuel line. And then we also disconnected the brake booster line. And I was actually pointing to the wrong line before. This top line right here is your purge line, but that is this smaller line right here that goes all the way down there to your gas tank. And then this upper line right here, that body clips there, goes down to the big bottom metal fitting right there. That's your brake booster line. It supplies vacuum for your brake booster over here. So we pulled both of those off. We pulled the fuel line off. And then you can see you have access to everything back there. So I was able to slide the heat shield out this way. Now let's hop under the car and I'll show you guys what is going on with the exhaust manifold and how we're gonna get that out. Cause we only got one bolt left, we're close. So underneath here is gonna be really hard to show, but you guys can see that two bolt flange right there and the one bracket. And you can see that I have all of the bolts out on it. And if I set the light up here, you can probably see that this whole thing is loose. Now the last piece to the puzzle to get this manifold out. I don't know if you guys can see that bolt there, but it's just on the far right side. So that is the last bolt that we gotta get out. And now that I'm looking at it from down here, I actually think I have enough space to get it from up top. So I'm gonna try and get it from up top and then I think we're gonna pull the manifold out the same way we pulled the heat shield out if I have enough space. If not, I honestly don't know how we're gonna get it out unless I drop this entire exhaust and then I can squeeze it right out of here, but we'll see. Nope, that is definitely not coming out the top. You guys can see way down there, I have the exhaust manifold completely off and it does not fit out right here. And if you guys can fit it out through the top, good on you because I wiggled it every which way that I possibly can and I cannot get it out. This is the only annoying part about this so far is working on the back of this engine. I would almost rather just pull the engine out of it and then just bolt the turbo kit on the engine and then lift it in from the bottom, but I don't have a hoist. So we gotta do all of this stuff on jack stands on the ground, which is always fun. Never mind. I think I could squeeze it out the top. I just gotta take this bracket off for that bolt that mounts the intake. And then she should come off, I think. And there's three bolts on this bracket. There's one. There's two. Get this third one. And then this manifold is out, boys. All right, this bracket right here. That's what I was talking about. There's three bolts on the back of it, kind of in like an offset triangle. One, two, three. This comes out. Let's see if we can squeeze that manifold past the wiring harness. And we're probably not gonna need this anymore anyways because we're not mounting the stock intake. Come on, baby. Oh, it's so close. Hey, let's go. Look at this crusty thing. That is 200 thousand straight kilometers of VTEC boys. Wow, I really sound like a Honda boy now. She's out, let's go. And we didn't even have to drop the exhaust out. Look at that boys. She is stripped right down, ready for a good old eBay turbo kit. I really sound like a true Honda owner now. This is fun. And we're doing it on a stock motor. I don't know how much boost this thing's gonna be able to take. I don't know Hondas very well. You guys let me know in the comments, all you Honda boys that have boosted these things because I know you guys are out there. I'm pretty sure if these are an NA engine, they gotta be a high compression engine. So I feel like they don't handle much boost, but I feel like they'll make a lot of power on low boost, like eight PSI, 10 PSI around there. My tuner Matt tells me this car on 10 PSI should make around 350 to 400. Okay, there we have it boys. She is 
stripped down, ready for the turbo kit. I think we have absolutely everything off that we need to get this turbo kit installed. We're probably gonna have to modify some of the hoses and stuff back there, but that'll be in a later video. We're also gonna have to swap out the injectors, pull the steel rail off. We're gonna have to pull a fuel pump out, get a new fuel pump in it. But just so that you guys know, every single part that I had to take off to get this ready for the turbo kit, it's all laying on the ground right here. And it doesn't look like much because it's not. That was honestly an hour and a half to two hours work tops. And that's only because I had to fight with that exhaust manifold to get it out. So we got the front bumper up there on the roof of the Civic. We got the battery, both wiper blades. We took out the entire intake system, which is right here. We took off the wiper cowl, the metal whole bracket piece for the wiper cowl to get clearance to get at the exhaust manifold. This front plastic trim piece that goes over the hood latch and the rad. Both the little side covers that sit along your front quarter panels. We took off the ECU and that was just so that I had more space to get my arms in there. The cover for the fuel rail, the cover for the coil packs, this little bracket that I just showed you guys, the exhaust manifold, heat shield, the bracket for the heat shield and to get at the bracket for the heat shield underneath the car i did have to take off this little cover right here which just sits on the axle there's just three bolts holding that on which are all pretty easy to get at and then i took off the battery tray just because i know we are going to be running the intercooler piping down there and that's going to give me more space and the coolant reservoir is on the battery tray and i didn't want to take that off so i just took that out too and that is literally everything this was so easy but that is because the teardown is always the easiest part now now it's time for the hard stuff, which is gonna be in the next video. But before we end this video, I wanna show you guys something real quick, cause I wanna see how this is gonna look. We gotta hop in the trunk and grab a box first, which is gonna be that little box right there that says made to play. And if you guys saw the unboxing video, you would know what's in that box. <laughs> oh my God. She's gonna sit like right there, I think. Something like that, right there maybe. This is badass. We're gonna have a turbo Honda. Okay, I gotta show you guys one more thing. First thing I gotta show you guys is we got three glow shift gauges for this car. I got these for a wicked deal from my buddy Jack. He hooked me up with a wide band gauge, a boost gauge, and an oil temp gauge. I know we don't have an oil pressure gauge, but oil temp's good enough. I don't even know if we're gonna hook up the oil temp gauge. We'll see how many fittings are on that little sandwich plate for the oil filter. Cause if there's an extra one, we can always thread the oil temp sensor into that. And that's easy enough. I also have this pillar mount. It is black and the whole interior of the car is tan on the roof. And all the A pillars and B pillars and C pillars are tan. So I don't know if we're gonna run this. I might get another gauge mount. If you guys have gauge mount suggestions for Hondas because I'm new to the Honda game, leave them in the comments down below and I'll take a look at them and maybe we'll pick some up. Next thing I got is just a bunch of little add fuses. And I buy these just off Amazon. I'll put a link to these in the description. They're awesome because you can just pop a fuse out that has power with ignition, then you can put a little add a fuse in there and you can wire it to supply power to your gauges. Last thing we got, and this was the expensive one. And maybe I can learn how to tune cars, I don't know. We got a Honda out of boys, officially a Honda boy. I'm so freaking excited to build this car. This is gonna be sick. So yeah, we got literally all the parts we need. The Honda build is officially in full swing, boys. I'm so excited to get this thing together. But that's gonna be it for this one because this video is probably long enough already, not gonna lie. So peace out, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Sierra, you wanna do the outro? You gotta put your hand into the camera. Peace out, boys.